Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be doing a tier list across all brawlers. This has been heavily requested for a long time now, but it actually takes a long time to do this type of video. Just because there's so many brawlers, so many different gameplays to get. Uh, but this is based on competitive and 3v3. Free free. I've not t taken into account any showdown just because I don't really play it. Nor is it really a competitive game mode. It doesn't really show skill. So I just want to do it based on 3v3 free and competitive. So yeah, let's just jump into it, number 38. So last on the list is going to be 8-bit. 8-bit has been really bad for a long time now. Not received any sort of buff for a very, very long time. Ever since his extra lifestyle power was really good, he's constantly received nerfs. And he's just really suffers in 3v3 modes because of his mobility. He's so hard to push. He definitely is the hardest brawler to push in 3v3 modes. In showdown, he's decent, but in terms of the competitive and the ladder pushing, he's just not going to be at good at all. Alright, so number 37 is going to be Dynamite. So it's really hard to pick between 8-bit and Dynamite, who's the worst brawler in the game. But I've gone for Dynamite for number 37, just because you can actually push him on maps like Triple Dribble. A few other brawler maps that he's actually really dominant on. Other than that, Dynamite just isn't good in the meta. He just doesn't compete with the uh, Max, the Gale, the Surges, the people that just go into his face constantly. It's a really aggressive meta at the minute. And Dynamite just sucks unless you're really, really, really good with him. So the third worst brawler in the game coming in at number 36, I've gone for Shelly. So Shelly, at the minute, is so hard to push. Uh, one of the hardest brawlers to push inside of 3v3, inside of Showdown, she's really bad as well, but mainly considering in 3v3, she's only really good against the Poco double tank kind of comps, and even then, she still really struggles because of Poco's heals. Uh, other than that, as I said, she's just really trash, she'll never ever win a lane unless it's against like a Frank or a tank, but that's very rare, This uh, the kind of meta at the minute is a lot of control brawlers, and, and as I said, she just gets outlaid by way too many people, and she's just utter trash right now. So number 35 is Crow. So Crow, inside of Showdown, again, people will be saying, oh, well, Crow is actually decent, but Crow inside of 3v3 and competitive is so, so bad. He struggles really bad. Again, he can't really win his lane too often. He's only really good on the open maps uh, inside of, like, Gem Grab and Brubble. Other than that, he's not really that good. His best mode is Brubble, and his best gadget is the uh, Shield one, so then you can get decent value out of his gadget. Gadget, but once his gadgets are gone, he's just super, super weak. He's just too squishy, just doesn't deal enough damage across the board, and he's just going to really struggle inside of his metal. So, coming in at number 34 on the list is going to be Jesse. So, Jesse, again, another one of his brawlers that hasn't been touched in terms of balance changes for a long time now. She's just suffered so much inside of the meta, she just doesn't have the DPS and the reload speed. And the damage just take out all of these brawlers that can just run into her face like the Jackies. All the tank brawlers. Every other brawler is just so much better than her at the minute. There's not a single mode where you would even consider her being uh, good at than another mid. Uh, because obviously she's a mid brawler. She's probably the worst mid brawler to play. Uh, but I mean she can she can be pushed inside a brawl ball. Uh, there's a few open maps that she's decent on, but other than that, she just really suffers inside of his metal and is in need of a big buff. But is up next at number 33, so Bull, again, he's been a really trash brawler inside of a meta. The only reason why he's a bit higher than his other brawlers is because of Gale. So inside of Heist, you can uh, include Bullet inside of that comp and just keep jumping in over and over again. And he's actually decent inside of Heist. He's got a really healthy win rate and high trophy ladder uh, just because of Gale. But other than that, Bull just really sucks at the moment. He hasn't had a buff or any kind of balance change for a while now. And he's, he probably is one of the worst tanks uh, alone, especially. He can't really win lane against any other person. As I said, the other reason why he's good is because of Gale. Next up at number 32 is Primo. So Primo, again, I uh, only really used inside a competitive when you know an enemy team is going to be running like a Frank or a Jackie or something like that. And then he's really, really dominant because he counters all other tanks. So that's one of the main reasons why he's above ball and other brawlers like that. But other than that, he's not really used much. He used to be used in Siege as well, but not really used there at all. Uh, but Primo, his best mode is going to be Brawl Ball. Other than that, he's not going to be used anywhere else. So coming in at number 31 is Tick. So Tick is really bad in every mode. You can maybe use him in sort of Siege, but his best mode is going to be Bounty by far. And that's the reason why he's higher up than some of these, because of how dominant he is in sort of Bounty. He's very good on uh, Ladder Bounty. There's so many maps that favour him, and that's why he's so high. Other than that, he's not really good, as I said. He just doesn't have the damage or the range or the uh, fast reload speed. There's a lot of aggressive brawlers that can just get into his face really quickly on all the different modes. So as I said, if you're looking to push a tick, just uh, only go on Bounty. So number 30 is Colt. So Colt uh, used to be really good inside of Heist, but don't really seem played it too much inside of Heist anymore on Ladder. And especially in competitive, he slowly sneaked his way into the Heist meta about a month ago or so. But at a minute, not really used too much. Overall, he's just decent. 
You have to be a really good Colt to make an impact on the field, uh, but it's just decent across all modes. You can definitely use him across like gem grab, brawl ball, uh, siege as I said, and uh, heist. You can use him across all of them modes, but it's just not very good. A lot of different brawlers are better than him, and you can just use uh, better counterparts. So coming in at number 29 is going to be Leon. So I've seen around a few places that Leon uh, is a really good brawler right now, but Leon just struggles so much. Uh, in this meta, there's just so many different brawlers that count him, it just hasn't got the reload speed to kind of keep up with things, but it's definitely received a good healthy buff, it's definitely gone up on the rankings, it's more easier to push on ladder, but in terms of competitive, he's just not going to be good at all, there's so many different options better than him, uh, his best modes are going to be like Pro Ball and Gem Grab for sure, he's going to be more uh, better towards them modes, and he's using the Invisi Heal Star Power, his gadget's got a buff as well, so he's definitely improved. But as I said, he's just not that good right now. So coming in at number 28 on the list is going to be Rosa. So Rosa used to be much higher on the list a few months ago. But now due to the meta, due to Gale being so good, Surge, other brawlers are like that, but just counter Rosa too much. She just feeds all of his brawlers that uh, have really valuable supers and uh, just kind of... Uh, tank counters like Max as well. All of his brawlers just counter Rosa. Uh, she's only good with Poco and only really good on Gem Grab on a, a select few maps like Stonefort. There's a bunch of grass and she could be sneaky and uh, get really good value out of Poco. But other than that, Rosa just suffers a lot in this meta. Number 27 is Penny. So Penny overall in, term, in terms of ladder, she's just a super versatile brawler but not really the best in, in terms of competitive. You don't really see her being played. Uh, she's decent on Siege, Brawl Ball, Gem Grab. She's uh, good on a lot of different roads bounties. She's good on literally all of them, uh, but she's just not the best. She's just decent everywhere. So rolling in at number 26 is going to be Daryl. So Daryl's not really been the best inside of the meta uh, overall. Uh, he was decent in Heist a few months ago. Then he went out of the Heist meta. Now he's re-entered again with the introduction of Gale into the meta with a launch pad. So you can just keep throwing Daryl in over and over again using the Steel Hoot style power. Just tanking a lot. Just keep suiciding over and over again. That's kind of where you want to be playing Daryl in Heist. He's good in Brubble though, definitely a good goal scoring option, but uh, Daryl, as I said, just not really been the strongest at the moment, and that high strategy is the only way you're really going to get the most value out of him. Nito is coming in at number 25, so Nito overall is a super versatile brawler, you can basically play her on ladder on every single map, she's going to be decent everywhere, but in terms of competitive, she's not really been used at all, her go-to game modes used to be heist and brawl, but ever since uh, gadgets changed from 3 to 2. She's just really fell down the list. She used to be like a top 7 brawler, but since that change, she's just been overwhelmed over and over again. Them stuns really used to help her in gaining control. I feel like she definitely probably needs a free event back to help her improve in the metal. So Rico's at number 24, so I was actually debating whether I should put him lower. Uh, but after thinking about things in terms of competitive, he's really good in heist right now. One of the best heist brawlers because of like the max meta, the gale meta. He's just really good defending on so many different maps, especially on brawl ball now. Uh, that Sprout's received a heavy nerf. Rico's got a lot of free life, so he can actually run around the map without being constantly shot by down by a Sprout. And that's one of the main reasons why he wasn't too good inside of a ladder. But inside of Brawl Ball, he's really good. Gem Grab, he's good as well. So he's a super versatile brawler, but uh, actually hard to pull off. So one of the biggest changes in the meta is M's. So she comes in at number 23. She used to be a top 5 brawler, top 3 brawler for the longest time. But ever since the gadget change, her gadget has gone from being really, really strong. Only two uses, but still used to be so strong, used to be able to control the battlefield really well. Uh, but now with the gadget and how small the radius is, it's so hard to get any sort of value. Even if you knock someone back, they're still going to be literally in your face unless you time it really well. Uh, as I said, she's just not really been the best. And also the uh, star power change, I mainly use bad karma now to uh, keep the range and get that good value. So maybe a surprising pick for some, but Bo is coming in at number 22. So in terms of competitive, Bo is actually used a lot inside of Gem Grab. He's a really good brawler inside of Gem Grab just because of the uh, constantly cycling of the gadgets and the Bomars of uh, destroying the map up. And then inside of Bounty, he's really good paired with Nanny. And that's one of the main reasons why he's so high up on the list. It's literally because of his gadget. You get a free super from Nanny and that combination is deadly inside of Ladder at the moment. So another brawler that's completely fell out the matter at the moment it's going to be bb and number 21 so bb used to be again a top seven brother for a very long time but she's constantly got nerfs over and over again to her hp and she's just kind of fell out the matter at the moment she's only really good inside of siege to collect that first bolt uh she's decent inside of rubble and decent inside of gem grab 
Again, she's really good paired with Poco to keep her alive constantly over and over again. She's going to be decent overall, but uh, there's just so many different better brawlers than her, like the Mr. P's that kind of counter her. Maxes just melt her down in a minute. She just doesn't have enough HP to kind of survive in this type of metal. So Jackie has gone from being a top three brawler and she's now coming in at number 20. So she's completely fell out of meta again. Again, another brawler I was debating with to put lower just because I don't really see her in ladder at all anymore, which is a nice sight to see. But overall, Jackie's still decent. She's really good inside of Brubble, her best mode. Overall, again, she's not going to be good in a single lane. The gadget uses, she's got free back, but the speed is terrible. She can't catch up to any sort of brawler. She's had a HP nerf as well that's really hit her hard. And there's just so many different better options. Again, she's only good paired with Poco. So here's another brawler that's completely fell out of the meta again is Sprout. So this is a brawler that everyone used to hate within the community. And used to be a top brawler for so, so long. And now he's coming in at number 19. So Sprout uh, used to be everywhere on ladder. Every single comp, people just used to use him. Gem grab, brawl ball. Every, every, literally every mode uh, Sprout was really good in. But now he's received a heavy nerf. And better stop out for him is going to be photosynthesis as well. But his uh, best game mode is going to be bouncy. Not really seen in any other game mode. He can be played inside gem grab, brawl ball. But a meta don't really favor him there. So Spike making his way onto number 18. So Spike overall. He's just a decent brawler. His uh, best mode's gonna be high, so that's where uh, he's really seen a resurgence inside of meta again. Uh, he used to be really good in Siege, but now he switched over to Heist because of the likes of Gale. He's just a super good hybrid brawler. He's good at defending, and then he's good at uh, jumping in on the safe and uh, using his gadget to get a ton of damage. Overall, he's good in Brawl Ball. He's good at gem grab as a lane. You can definitely hold your lane pretty well with him. And just overall, as I said, he's just a super versatile brawler. You can play him on so many different modes. So Barley's coming in at number 17. So Barley's obviously really good in Siege. That's his best game mode. He's near enough uh, needed to be used in every single combo. He's the best thrower option, definitely on Siege. Uh, but other than that, he's decent on Brawl Ball and he's decent on gem grab. Definitely holds his own. And this is mainly because of his gadget change. Uh, a few months ago, I think it, I believe it was. It was an increase in the radius and the duration of the slow, which really helps him in the metal. So 16 on the list. You're gonna be surprised by this one, but it's gonna be Mortis. So a lot of people say Mortis needs a buff, but uh, to be honest, I feel like Mortis might need a, a nerf because uh, the top rollers I'm gonna mention soon, he literally counters all of them. He's such a good counter in terms of competitive. A lot of people bring out a Mortis, and as you can see, people meme it a lot, but it's got a very, very high success rate and win rate inside of uh, competitive. Just because he is a really good brawler, he has a high skill cap, but at the same time, he just completely hard counters like half of the uh, OP brawlers inside of this meta, and that's why he's gonna be placing so high on this list. So coming up at number 15, it's going to be Piper. So I think Piper, overall with the uh, recent introduction of a gadget, she's gonna be super uh, OP, especially as a gem carrier. She's gonna be really good on the long range maps. She's got resurgence in Siege as well on a few of the maps, uh, but, well, the open ones. Uh, because obviously she's got that gadget uh, you can use it in two different ways you can use it to finish off a kill or get the first shot off to get that early aggression she's good in brawl ball on certain maps overall just feel like she's uh, really decent and really strong obviously her best at game mode is going to be bounty next up on the list is going to be nanny at number 14. so nanny used to be a really bad brawler inside of the meta she used to be one of the worst brawlers by far just because of how hard it used to be uh, to hit the shots but now she's got a buff that actually makes it easier to hit the shots. Uh, even when you miss a shot, it's got an extended range, which really helps inside of the metal. She's good inside of gem grab. She can use as a lane brawler or a mid brawler. She's definitely really good with the uh, super. That's going to be the most clutch thing about her for sure. She's going to be good inside of bounty with the bow gadget. Uh, she's going to be good inside of brawl. She can definitely hold it mid and a lane by herself. So definitely a really good brawler inside of metal right now. So stomping his way onto number 13 is going to be Frank. So Frank, again, one of the main reasons why he's going to be so good is because of Poco. Uh, but Frank's just really good overall at the minute. Uh, I've seen a big resurgence in the Siege meta with Frank. Just because of his gadgets, uh, he really counters Gene really well. Gene has to waste three pulls to get all of his gadgets down. Again, he's really good inside of Brawl Ball. He's good inside of Gem Grab. And it's all literally because of Poco. The combination is just insane. So Tara's number 12 on the list. So Tara's best modes are going to be Brawl Ball. And gem grab she's really not that good inside of any other mode except for snake priory on bouncy other than that she's not good on the other modes uh, but Taurus received a buff recently she's got an increase in damage and an increase in health so this has really helped her inside of a meta and especially with jackie falling out of the meta as well that was her biggest hard counter and mr p's a big counter to tara but other than that she definitely holds her own 
and is definitely seen a resurgence in the metal. Number 11 is Poco. So Poco is in need of a big nerf. He's been so strong for a, a very long while now, and this is mainly due to the fact he's got three different forms of healing. As I said before, he's got a gadget form of healing, he's got his super, and he's got his star power, which is just insane when combined with a bunch of different tanks and, and loads of different brawler combinations. He's just so good inside of Brawl and he's really good inside of Gem Grab. It's really hard to uh, stop them type of comps. So Pam is coming in at number 10. So Pam, uh, you've probably seen a lot in competitive. Uh, Pam's a really good brawler to use on certain maps. She definitely holds her lane really, really well. She's amazing in Siege. She's one of the number one brawlers inside of Siege just because of how good she is on defense and offense. She can hold her own really well. I feel like a way to nerf is probably to nerf her gadget, how much she heals because it feels like a lot of the time you're about to kill her and she just gadgets up. Uh, but as I said, she's just really good. She's a really good aggro brawler. People play a bit too passively, but a really good Pam we uh, play our aggro get into people's faces and just deal a shed load of damage so number nine on the list is going to be brock so brock used to be high on the list but he recently uh, obviously received a nerf in his hp and this makes it so sandy and cole can take him down much easier but other than that brock's still really solid across the board he's good in every single game mode and just a super versatile pick his uh win rates are super healthy but actually lower in a lot of modes because brock is kind of a high skill cap roller in a way you have to have re really good aim and really good positioning so number eight on the list is going to be b so b's really good inside of gem grab she's good uh gem carrier she's really good in brawl i bet her best modes for sure across all the other game modes she's not really the best in but because she's so strong inside of m mode uh, she's really good hard counter to poco double tank you'll hear me say it a lot but she just absolutely shreds some kind of compositions and that's really popular inside of meta again uh, these poker comps aren't going away, so B is going to be really strong for that reason. So number 7 on the list is going to be Sandy. So Sandy received a big buff not so long ago, and now he's just got a big resurgence in the meta. He's amazing inside of Rubble and Gem Grabber, his best modes. He can be used in Siege, uh, Heist and Bounty, not really used too often, but because he's so strong inside of them game modes, he near enough wins every single lane. He's just amazing. His super is one of the best in the game. It allows him to keep so much control. And that's one of the main reasons why he's so high on the list. Jean is number six on the list. So even with the HP nerf to Jean, Jean's still going to be really good inside of a meta. Uh, his biggest counter is Mr. P. And that's probably why he's not as high. But Jean just amazing inside of Gem Grab, inside of Brubble, inside of Siege. They're his best modes for sure. Inside of Bouncy, he's actually good on certain maps as well. His early game mode, uh, other than Bobby, he can play him in Heist. Uh, he's, not that, he's not very good in Heist at all. Uh, but other than that, Jean's just super versatile. He's got one of the best supers inside of the game. He's got a really good star power in Magic Puffs. Allows him to uh, combine with it a load of rules. So moving into the top five now, and number five is going to be Carl. So Carl has been so strong in the meta for a good few months now, ever since they've upped his damage uh, overall. He's just super good on the lane using the power throw star power. And then even when you use a Poco comp with Cole, he's super good in it. You can use the protected Pirate star power and deal a lot of damage with that because you've got the Poco heals that can keep you alive for a very long time. Uh, Cole just wins so many different lanes. There's literally, I don't think there's a single lane brawler that actually beats him in that 1v1 engagement just because of how much damage he does and how quickly he can deal it. So Max is speeding her way onto number four. Max has been a really good brawler for a long time. That's normally the go-to band brawler in competitive for us because of how good and strong she is she's amazing inside of heist brawl gem grab uh siege she's really good in as well heist she's really good in she's super versatile across all game modes she deals a lot of damage she's a really good count uh counter to tanks and uh just so speed allows a load of different brawlers to get super good value so coming in at number three and i could have argued he could have been high on the list but it's going to be mr p so mr p is so annoying inside of a meta loads of different pro teams ban him just because of how strong he is and how annoying he is uh, especially with the introduction of his newest star power he already was really good inside of a uh, meta but now you can switch between the star powers you've got the revolving door star power that allows uh, the portals to spawn every single second and when you're using that on the map with a lot of walls uh, it's just really annoying having to constantly shoot them portals and uh, it may not seem like a big deal but it actually removes a lot of ammo from the opposition and allowing you to get a lot of control because they're constantly having to take them portals down so the second best brawler inside of the game right now is going to be gale so there's no really surprises here gale has got a massive buff 
He used to be one of the worst brawlers in the game and they've completely reversed that and now he's the second best brawler inside the game. This is mainly due to the fact that he can constantly cycle his supers over and over again. He deals a lot of damage combined with his star power that stuns people against the walls. You can just keep cycling your supers over and over again. There isn't a lot that actually counters Gale. I think the only really counters to Gale is like Gene and Carl on the lane counters him a little bit if you keep your distance. Mr. P's porters counter him. But other than that, there's literally no counters to him. He's strong in every single mode. He's completely changed the highest meta. He's completely changed the siege meta uh, to get our first bolt. And there's not a single game mode that he's bad in. So the new best brawler inside of the game. There should be no really surprises here. If you've played any sort of ladder at any uh, 600 plus kind of gameplay. It's going to be Surge. So this is when Surge is fully maxed at max level. Level 10 with the star power. Uh, Surge is so so good. Uh, even when he's his first level. He's still decent in because of his star power. It allows you to get really good chip damage. He's good in every single mode. As soon as you get that first level up. He's going to be really good. Because then he gets speeded up. And you can just build your super up way too easily. Uh, it's so frustrating to face a surge on ladder. Because if you haven't got surge on your team. It feels like, feels like you're at a major disadvantage. Because of how strong he is. And especially if he gets to his max level. It literally feels like you're fa facing a boss brawler. Instead of a normal game. Okay guys this is going to be the end of today's video. I hope you really enjoyed that one. That took a while to make. Especially whilst ladder pushing. Uh, but because I'm number one at the minute, I'm pushing a lot. I'm using a lot of different brawlers at higher levels. I consider this a really accurate tier list because obviously I play competitive, recently qualified as well, and at number one on ladder. So, uh, I mean, this list is as good as it gets, kind of thing, without taking a lot more time like diving into the win rates and whatnot. But this is a pretty accurate tier list, I feel like. And uh, there won't be balance changes for a few weeks, so this is what the meta is going to be for a while. So, definitely take this tier list into consideration. But let me know. Uh, what videos you want to see from me in the future if you like these type of videos definitely let me know in the comment section below don't forget to like comment subscribe and i'll see you all later